rings for me as it does for those who truly believe. You know, family movie night is a lot of fun when you can get everyone to watch the same movie. <laughs> With popcorn and soda all ready to go, we grabbed blankets and one night we snuggled up on the couch to watch The Bucket List with Morgan Freeman and Jack Nicholson. So now, if you have not watched The Bucket List, please let me provide you with a spoiler alert, okay? So we have two unlikely gentlemen who are roomed together with terminal illness. They make a list of all the things that they need to accomplish before they die. And in watching this movie, Morgan Freeman wants to see something most majestic. Jack Nicholson wants to kiss the most beautiful girl in the world. And together, they race cars, they skydive, and they see some of the seven wonders of the world. Well, after watching that movie, I watched them find joy in their experiences and find deeper meaning in life. And I'm sure many of you have your own bucket lists but you may have not written them down. So after this movie, I decided to write down my bucket list. Thinking of, you know, trips to Italy, Portugal, Spain, all the things I was gonna do, these culinary adventures. Start a business, write a book. But there was one particular thing that tugged on my heartstrings. You see, when I was about 10 years old, I was sitting at the kitchen table my mom was making supper, and she had saved these shoe boxes so that we could wrap them up to put treasures in them to give to the orphanages in Ukraine. And all I could do was sit there. I was playing with tape, you know, sticking tape, getting it all over myself, patching boxes because I didn't <coughs> cut the wrapping paper right. I don't know if any of that happens to you. But I just thought they were beautiful. I daydreamed and I wondered what it would be like to watch a child open my shoebox. Would their face light up? Would they be excited with anticipation? And then I thought, that's it. I'm putting that on my bucket list. I want to watch a child open my shoebox. And then I thought, as I wrote it down, I don't know how to do something like that. How do you even start a project like that? So I packed it away on my bucket list. And about a year later, I was sitting in church, reading the church bulletin, and there was a school that needed community support. And in this school was a vice principal that I actually knew. And I sat there thinking to myself, I cannot go to Ukraine anytime soon. But there's needs in my own backyard that I can create the same experience that I was looking for to check off my list that I could do in my local community. See, this school is located in a low social economic area with a lot of high needs, financially, socially, a higher immigrant population, and they needed our help. So I decided I was gonna phone the vice principal. So I picked up the phone and I told him about my bucket list. I said, I want to give a shoebox to a child. He goes, that's great, Dad. We have 125 of them. I was like, okay. He goes, we really would appreciate the help. So I got off the phone and I was like a Cheshire cat. I was like, I can do this. I don't know how, but I can do this. And all I could think of, my why, is watching this child open my box. That was gonna be my why, I'll figure it out. So I sat down and I emailed all of my family and friends. I shared the vision with everyone around me and one by one, 125 shoeboxes showed up. I had volunteers, didn't know where they came from, but I had volunteers, I had a shoebox, 125 of them and someone I worked with lent me a Santa suit to make special delivery. It was awesome. So with having all these shoe boxes, 
you can understand it can get a little bit crazy. But it was really exciting to watch everyone come together. And I thought, wow, when you don't know your how, look what could happen. So we get these 125 shoe boxes. We go visit the school. We hide the presents under tarp so they don't know that they're coming. And then three, two, one, we have this big reveal. And imagine 125 kids opening their shoe boxes at once. I leaned over, I gave a child my shoe box, and I watched their eyes go big and their smile so wide. It was brighter than any Christmas tree. And then I looked around me. There was not a dry eye in that room of all the adults. Watching these kids, a pure joy of receiving. And in that moment, I just was so full of gratitude and all I could say is, you know what? I checked that off my bucket list. And it was wonderful. It was so great that I thought after that year, the following year, I was like, you know what? That was a lot of fun. I think we should do that again. So I called up the same vice principal. And I said, can we do this again? It was really great. The kids were fantastic. And it made me think about a child who opened the box and he put on his toque and he said, you know what, you got the wrong hockey team on here, but I still like it anyway. And another child, you know, pulls out their toothbrush and says, you know what, I finally have my own toothbrush. This is in our own backyards. And I, as I was thinking about that, I said, you know, I'm not just going to do one school this year, I'm going to do two. That suddenly made the how even bigger. So when the vice principal he said, you know, Deb, I wanted to let you know, all these years that you've been sending shoeboxes to Ukraine, my mom's the one who ships them. Wow. And it was very powerful to me. And then I said, so can we come back? And he said, sure, but we have one request from you. Can you feed us? And in that very moment, I saw a little girl holding a plate that said, feed me. I paused, because all I could think of was, oh my gosh, this how just got big. And I said, sure, no problem. I, I, I got it. I get off the phone, and my husband goes, so, what did you get us into now? <laughs> and I said, don't worry. We will figure it out. Notice how I said we? <laughs> so again, I got on my mission of emailing family and friends letting them know that we've expanded this whole vision. People were making shoe boxes, collecting all of these items. They were doing it as families. It rippled to organizations, and they did it as a team building activity. I suddenly had a luxury car dealership being the place where people could drop off their boxes and collect donations. Size, so it's okay. I even have an insurance company where their staff checks all the boxes we got to make sure there's no war toys, no weapon toys in there, and no used items. Because for some of these kids, this is their only gift. So we gathered, we went from different organizations, and these, all these donations started pouring in. But there was one thing I still had to figure out. I had to figure out how I'm going to feed them. So one day, I was folding clothes in my son's room. And suddenly there was this bright flash across the wall and it was a logo of a company that was sampling pancakes at a triathlon I had done that summer. And I thought, oh, I remember talking to this gentleman and we had mutual friends. And I thought, I'm going to phone him. His name was Frank. I picked up the phone and I left this long-winded message from this blonde girl. Hey, do you remember me? We talked to the triathlon, you know, you were making pancakes, and I was just left this message. Frank called back. He ended up meeting with my husband because I wasn't able to meet with him. And at that meeting, he pulled out his own little black book, his book of dreams and goals. And he said, I'm in. And I'm able to check something off my bucket list now. So the spirit of Christmas. Pancake Breakfast and Shoebox Campaign was born. 
And from that, every year we wondered if we would have enough shoe boxes, if we'd have enough pancakes, and it multiplied, literally. One year, we did five schools. 1,300 shoe boxes is what you see there. The bus would pull up in the morning to pick up my kids, and my kids would be, Mom, we're going through the front door. I said, why? What's the big deal? Mom, do you know how many presents are in the garage? We're going to look like hoarders. <laughs> I didn't care. It was beautiful to me. So we went to the school, and it was just so powerful. Because you see, it's a whole experience. One of the most powerful stories is about a reporter that came to the spirit of Christmas. That morning, and if you're from Canada, you will completely understand this, she forgot to plug in her vehicle in the winter time, so the car had trouble starting. Then she went to go get coffee through a drive-through, and it was 17 cars deep, and by the time she got to the front, it didn't taste good. She gets to the school, thinks, okay, I got my story on you guys, I'm out of here. And my husband was pleading with her, just give us 20 minutes. You have to experience Christmas. You have to experience the spirit of giving and receiving. She's like, all right, all right, I'm coming to the gym. She comes to the gym. We're all, the volunteers, my elves, are all singing Christmas carols. Santa and Mrs. Claus arrive. Bells are ringing. And all of a sudden, we're ready for the big give. Are you ready to be part of the big gift? Are you ready? Do you think you want to see what's inside? about the spirit of giving and receiving and what it meant to her. That Christmas, I gave her a bell. May she always hear the sound. But kids were rummaging through boxes and they share with each other, what did you get, what did you get? But it is so powerful because what happened next was a volunteer had given her a shoe box to give to a child. She leaned over and gave the child a box. The little girl beside her said, what's that? She goes, well, it's a gift, of course. She goes, oh, I've never had a gift before. Right in that moment, the photographer, she was taking pictures, spinning around, with tears just running down her face to really feel what it meant for a child to open up their shoebox. Something as small as a shoebox. There's two really special stories that I want to share with you in over the 12 years that we've been doing this. One is about a little autistic boy, about grade five. We had all the big give in the gym, and of course, with all the commotion, he couldn't be in the gym. So he opened his shoebox separately. And when he Got a chance when the commotion came down, his teacher's aide came with him to the gym and he had a form of a, in plasticine. And then he'd follow Santa and he'd tap Santa and show him that he made a plasticine figure of Santa. And Santa would go, oh, cool, good job. Next thing I knew, a couple minutes later, the boy's back again. He's pulling up his pen like showing Santa his brand new socks. And Santa again gives him the thumbs up. So I go off to change into my civilian clothing, and I hear this commotion just outside the office beside me. And the teacher's aide gasps. She's, <gasps> and Santa looks. The little boy was leaning in for a hug. So Santa just gently turned him. There was a Christmas tree behind, and the teacher's aide snapped a picture. The teacher's aide said, we can't even get a school picture for his mom, let alone a picture of him smiling with Santa. They were going to blow it up, frame it, and give it to her for Christmas. Oh. 
What do you think this boy's name was? His name was Trust. The next story I want to share with you is about a little girl named Lola. She's a five-year-old African-Canadian, beautiful, big smile, bright wide eyes, brightest pajamas, bright pink. And she was patiently waiting for her present when it came. And she, all the kids were coming up, picking up their presents after the big give. And here she is tugging on Santa's pant leg. Santa, Santa, you're coming to my house, right? He goes, well, of course, they come to every boy and girl's house. And off she scootered off. Then she comes back and she's like, Santa, Santa, you're coming to my house, right? And you're bringing me a Christmas tea set. And he's like, wow, that's a big order. Of course I will. And next thing you know, who's tugging again? Lola. Yes, Lola. Santa, how are you going to get in my house? He goes, well, through the chimney, of course. But Santa, I don't have a chimney. And he thinks for a second and he goes, I have magic keys. I will make sure that present is under your tree. This is our secret. That present will be there. <coughs> well, one of the things that we do is we debrief with our volunteers after every session. And as he was sharing this story, I was alarmed. Because I thought, if she doesn't get a Christmas t-shirt, she is not going to believe ever again. Later that day, he went to work and he shared the story with one person. The very next day, there was a beautiful china tea set sitting on his desk. We wrapped it up for a special little girl. He phoned up the principal and told her what had happened. She called the mom to came, come pick up this gift to put under the tree for Christmas. Two weeks after these events, we usually go back and drop off any toque, myths, anything we've collected for the school because over the holidays, kids have lost their myths. They have forgotten things. So he goes back to drop off all these things. He's sitting in the office with the principal and who comes running into the office? Lola, eyes like this. And they said, Lola, what did you get for Christmas? Well, I got a Christmas tea set, of course, and I had tea with my mom and my teddy bears every single day. She will truly believe. The reason I share this bucket list story with you and the stories that I've shared with you is that I see a lot of people who have bucket lists. They have hopes, they have goals, and they have dreams but they get stuck on the how, and they put it away on a shelf. They tuck it under the bed, thinking, it's not possible. I know people who think, it sounds so expensive for my dream, but they have never researched how much it will cost. They look at it and see that it might need a little bit of elbow grease, a little bit of work, effort, and they back down from the challenge. They say that, that they don't have enough time Yet they're scrolling, they're binging on Netflix or whatever TV program they watch. Here's this end. They think they don't have the resources, but we weren't meant to have all the resources. The people around us have resources and we need to ask for help and bring them into our visions. See, we have resources. We all have the same amount of time. There's ways to make money to make things happen. Every year we start with nothing and we end with nothing but full hearts of gratitude and beautiful memories. So if you have a bucket list item, I really encourage you to take the steps toward it, to really think about what it is because something as small as a shoebox, you can pack so much in. But I'll tell you one thing, all I wanted to do was give it to one child and it expanded exponentially. You never know the impact that you're gonna have, but if you wait to get started, you will never know. One of the lines from the Bucket List movie, one day your life will flash before your eyes. Make sure it's worth watching.
And the one thing that I do want to leave you with today is even when you don't know the how, if you know your why, why you do the things that you do, what drives you, and you decide to trust and believe, you will figure it out. So let me ask you, can you hear the sound? Do you believe?